For example, if you're learning a Chopin etude, which is pretty basic for most piano students once they get to that level, uh, for example, the Ocean Etude, uh, Opus 25, number 12. This is great. This is just helping you with arpeggios to warm up uh, and also learning the piece. <laughs> in there but um I think that is a great concept if you're having trouble with a piece so for example I'm playing the Chopin Sonata in B minor right now uh, and this this passage is a little bit tricky for me so coming down in those fourths practice those as my warm-up. Anything in your pieces you can practice as your warm-up, which will really help you to learn those pieces and to perfect uh, the technical aspects of those. And every piece is going to present it a little bit differently. So you're going to become more and more fine-tuned. You know, rather than just doing these, these kinds of arpeggios in the Ocean Etude, we're learning a different kind of arpeggio where we go up one octave, and then we do that same note again. So it's two of the same notes. So that's uh, another interesting aspect of warming up is it will always fine tune itself a little bit if we're using our pieces because each piece presents it a little bit differently. All right, now that we've gone over warming up, I think just simply and very sh briefly, I want to introduce how we can learn new pieces effectively. I think this is a big struggle for a lot of people. One thing I always try to do is break my piece into sections. Again, this video is all about organized practicing, so why not organize the piece to help us think about it more clearly? If we're studying for a test, we're not going to just read through the chapter once. We're probably going to categorize. So if we're learning about American history, uh, and very broadly, we could do Civil War, Revolutionary War, um, the Cold War. If we were doing it by wars, you could categorize rather than saying, War in America and just kind of doing a straight shot through the entire thing. That might be a little bit more difficult. You could organize it. So same thing with your pieces. So I usually like to get three to five big pieces within the music. Um, and I think within those sections, we need to then organize it further. So today, I was just going to use the Mozart C major, uh, K311, I believe it is sonata uh, to demonstrate. So if anyone has their music with them, we would just divide maybe the first page down to the softer section, and then the second page, and then the third page up to the repeat. Or, yeah, the repeat. I'm not too familiar. I've actually never learned this song. I've just taught it before. So um, that'll kind of be helpful today, hopefully, since I, if I don't have this piece even close to <laughs> Perfect. So hopefully that will be helpful in demonstrating some of these ways to perfect things because I don't have it perfect by any means. Okay, uh, so that gives us an idea. And, and another method of learning new pieces is we all, I, I always like to learn things backwards. Not note by note, but by sections. I like to say, okay, I took, I took those three large sections that I just talked about. I'm going to start with the last section. And then I would start within that section, I would divide maybe four or five little starting places to remind myself, okay, I have these. These are also great for memorizing. So memorizing backwards by these starting places, you always go from the last starting place to the end. And then the second to last starting place to the end. And you keep adding backwards, so you're always finishing to the end. And really, take a personal inventory of yourself. How many of you have ever had the experience where you're able to play the first line perfectly of the piece and then it progressively gets worse and worse and worse throughout your entire piece and pretty much you're falling apart by the end? You know, it's happened numerous times to me. Sometimes now that I've been practicing this way, it's almost the opposite. Sometimes the beginning's the weakest, but I think it's a little bit stronger of a method because almost all of us know the beginnings of our pieces better than the ends of our pieces. So I, I would really advocate learn your piece backwards by those small sections and then divide it into the big sections backwards as well. 
that's going to always keep your mind stimulated too because a lot of times, say that we're just playing this piece. Sometimes even by a second or third major we're zoning out. But if we're always hitting those starting places, we're always engaged because we don't, we're not really dealing with huge sections either. Whereas if we start from the beginning, sometimes we find ourselves at the second to last line saying, oh man, I was just meaning to play the first line, practice the first line. So it saves time too. All right, this is the real meat of the video now. We are going to learn about how to perfect certain places by organizing our practicing. We're going to organize it into a variety of different ways. The very first way, and I'm just going to take a passage in here. Uh, I've, I've actually been teaching this to one of my students, and the student's really incredible. He's doing great things with, with this piece, uh, but we were having a hard time putting this hands together really precisely. So, I'm just going to take that little passage today and demonstrate all these different ways, because it deals with some some uh, agility work. Uh, it also deals with getting the notes aligned exactly together and it'll, it deals with also different characters because we can, we can hear these first measures being a lot louder and then it's a big contrast. So we're going to go over some ways to enhance all of those things and to really solidify those in our, in our playing. 